Francium. Francium is a naturally occurring element named after, you guessed it, France. It was the last element discovered in nature rather than synthesized. However, it is incredibly rare and has only been found in trace amounts in uranium minerals. It usually pops into existence one atom at a time, then disappears almost instantaneously, and it is estimated that there is only about one ounce of francium on the planet at any one time. It forms naturally during the radioactive decay of other elements and decays rapidly itself, making it one of the few elements with no stable form. When it decays, it releases high energy particles that can break DNA strands, potentially resulting in cancer. Obtaining a solid sample of francium is incredibly improbable, and studying it is nearly impossible, since the severe decay resulting from its short half-life would immediately vaporize any quantity visible to the naked eye. Not only that, its instability in large quantities means that when in contact with water, it would explode spectacularly, and it is theorized that just the moisture in the air alone would cause a volatile chemical reaction. Gallium. Gallium is a soft, silver metal used primarily in LEDs and a wide variety of other electronics. In nature, gallium is never found as a free element. However, it is easily obtained by smelting. Although it is a solid at room temperature, it is still so soft that you could cut it with a knife. In addition, it has a low melting point of 30 degrees Celsius, less than 10 degrees above room temperature. So if you were to pick up a lump of gallium, it would melt from the warmth of your hand. Then, it would solidify again if you set it back down. A prank among chemists is to smelt gallium into utensils, then watch as their victims' tools melt away as they try to use them. Even with such a low melting point, gallium's boiling point is quite high at 2200 degrees Celsius, giving it one of the greatest ratios between melting point and boiling point of any element. Copernicium. Copernicium is a radioactive, man-made element about which little is known. Although Copernicium was only recently discovered, it is named after Nicholas Copernicus, an influential 16th century astronomer. It is produced artificially by bombarding atoms of lead with ions of zinc through a heavy ion accelerator, though only a few atoms of Copernicium have ever been made because because the immensely strong electric forces acting the zinc and lead mean they are much more likely to fly apart than fuse together. It decays extremely fast, with a mere 30 second half-life, meaning scientists have very little time to make any sort of meaningful observations, and as of now, only has use as a trivial experiment. Due to its presumably weak metallic bonds, it is also theorized to become liquid, or even gaseous at room temperature, which would make it the first gaseous metal on the periodic table. Curium. Curium was discovered during experiments in World War II, and is named after chemist and physicist Marie Curie and her husband Pierre Curie, who were pioneers in understanding radioactivity. Curium is extremely radioactive, so much so that it glows a brilliant purple in the dark. It is made synthetically, though it is theorized that it may have existed millions of years ago. If absorbed into the body, it can accumulate in bone marrow, consequently destroying red blood cell formation. Only a few kilograms of curium are produced each year, and it has two main uses. As a fuel for radioisotope thermal generators, which are electrical generators that produce power from radioactive decay, found in deep space space probes, and in heart pacemakers, and is also used as an alpha emitter for alpha particle X-ray spectrometry, used on several different projects designed for studying Mars. It's quite appropriate that an element first synthesized during a global conflict is now so pivotal to space exploration, isn't it? Bismuth. Bismuth is a bizarre metal with an electric and thermal conductivity that is unusually low for elements in the same group. It has a very low melting point and can grow stunning little ziggurat-like crystals. By cooling it slowly after melting it, the fantastical colors arise from the thin layer of oxide that coats the metal. It is used in certain alloys, but is probably best known as the main ingredient in stomach ache remedies, such as Pepto-Bismol. Bismuth has an extremely long half-life, about 20 quintillion years. This means that it is technically a radioactive element, but its decay is so slow that it poses no practical risk of radiation exposure. To put it into perspective, if 100 grams of bismuth had been present at the beginning of the universe more than 14 billion years ago, about 99.9999999 grams of it would still be around to Day. Bismuth is unique in that it's highly diamagnetic, meaning it creates an opposing magnetic field when subjected to an external magnetic field and is repelled by it. This property is so pronounced that placing a magnet between two bismuth crystals can result in the magnet levitating. Sulfur. Sulfur is the tenth most abundant element by mass in the universe and the fifth most common on Earth. It makes up almost 3% of the Earth's mass, which is enough to form two entire moons. It can be frequently found near hot springs and volcanoes, and as a result became associated with hell in the Bible. It's most commonly known as a seemingly innocent yellow rock, but if you melt it, a blood-red liquid manifests. If you burn it, a striking neon blue flame is produced. It is known for having a distinctive aroma, but actually, sulfur in its purest form has no smell. The stink associated with the element comes from many of its compounds. For example, mercaptans give skunks their defensive odor, and hydrogen sulfide gives rotten eggs their nasty smell. Despite its stench, sulfur compounds are present in several amino acids and two essential vitamins, biotin and thiamine, all of which are crucial for life. 
A certain compound, sulfur hexafluoride, is so dense that when inhaled, it significantly deepens the voice until the compound escapes the body. This may remind you of the next element, helium. Helium was discovered when scientists were observing a solar eclipse in 1868 and noticed a yellow wavelength coming off the sun, and actually wasn't found on Earth until later studies on Mount Vesuvius revealed helium leaking from its crater. It forms about 23% of all matter, clocking in as the second most widespread element on Earth. It is a colorless, odorless, tasteless, inert gas which means it doesn't react with other elements, and its boiling and melting points are the lowest of any element. At an incredibly low temperature of negative 272 degrees Celsius, helium becomes a superfluid. When poured into a container, it defies gravity by creeping up the walls in an attempt to reach a warmer area, where it eventually evaporates. Helium is so light that it actually escapes Earth's gravitational pull. Its low density also provides a squeaky voice effect when inhaled. The less dense the gas surrounding the vocal cords, the faster they vibrate, raising the voice's pitch. However, this party trick should be practiced in moderation as helium replaces oxygen in the lungs and can kill you if you inhale enough. Silicon. Silicon is a remarkable element because it's largely responsible for the technological revolution of the past 30 years. If it wasn't for silicon, you wouldn't be watching this video right now. The reason for silicon's dominance in the tech industry is that, when purified, exhibits a behavior known as semiconductivity. A semiconductor's ability to switch between conductive and insulating states enables the creation of logic gates, which process binary information in computers. Silicon Valley, California California, takes its name from this essential element, as silicon is the backbone of computer chips, which power everything from microelectronics to modern smartphones. Beyond its technical properties, silicon is also incredibly abundant, comprising about 25% of the Earth's crust, making it both accessible and indispensable. It almost seems as if nature designed it specifically for humans to discover and harness for technology. It also plays a role in the natural world in its oxide form, silica, which is the primary component of sand, making it responsible for the soft, white beaches we enjoy. Carbon. Carbon might seem too familiar to show up on this list, but its properties aren't something to scoff at. Arranging carbon atoms in a particular way results in soft, pliable graphite, but rearrange the crystal structure and the atoms form diamond, one of the hardest materials in the world. Nearly 10 million carbon compounds have been discovered, and scientists estimate that carbon is the keystone for 95% of known compounds, earning it the nickname King of the Elements. It is the most essential element to support life. If it wasn't for carbon, we wouldn't be here, and neither would the universe as we know it. DNA proteins, cells, coal, pencils, and the food you eat are all made up from carbon, and it comprises 20% of the weight of all living organisms. Many chemists will tell you that carbon is the closest thing to magic that exists in our reality. Mercury. The symbol HG that mercury is known for comes from its Greek name, which means liquid silver. It is the only metal that is liquid at room temperature, and is known for being extremely toxic to the body. Just a small drop can be easily absorbed by the skin and cause damage to nerves, the liver, the kidney, and the brain. Since it's a liquid, it can also evaporate and become an invisible, odorless, toxic vapor that when inhaled can cause the same damage. One example of mercury's toxicity in action is back in the 18th century. Mercury nitrate was used to clean animal pelts before turning them into hats, and it was discovered that a large percentage of the people who were working with those chemicals ended up suffering from brain damage, so the term mad as a hatter was coined as a result. 